Hey everybody, Joe here again. You know what that means? Time for our crafty catch up. Grab yourself a brew. Now I know some of you are trying to be good, so we'll call it a cheeky snack today. Maybe not a biscuit. Although I, some of you have messaged me, <coughs> excuse me, and said you've been having a whole packet. Mm, maybe we'll just stick to one, one little cheeky biscuit. I love your choice of biscuits, by the way. Now today, I thought we'd do something. We're going to have a bit of fun. Um, our theme on, on Lavinia, if you go to the Lavinia website, every month we have a challenge and it's under the sea this month. And so lots of us have been posting various um, work and samples with um, our lovely jellyfish and mermaids and um, uh, fish. And quite a few people have said, um, oh, all the fish swim the same way. Well, this got me thinking, you know what I'm like, my mind never stops. So I thought we'd have a bit of fun. And we're going to create this design. And really, it's my um just a twist on a reflection. But I thought it was so fun because hey, we get the fish swimming the opposite way. And I just <clears throat> in my little head, the fish are, are coming along and they've hit that mirror in the middle of the sea. <laughs> and they can see themselves, the reflection. And as I say, it's just a fun thing to do. And I thought it just shows a twist on the, the reflection. I have done um, a video a bit ago on three different ways of creating a reflection. I'll um, put the link if I remember. Hopefully I will. Right, I'm just going to have a little sip of water. You know my voice tends to uh, go a bit funny. But if that's the only thing I'm left with after this long Covid, you know what? We can cope with it, can't we? So, like I say, that's my idea. And if you want to join in, we're going to start with a piece of card, which I've put somewhere safe. And this is nine inches by five inches, just because I thought it was a good size for me to actually get to do the fish in, in, a, in a reflection. And what we'll do is we'll very quickly make a background. And we've done this technique before. It's a technique lots of people do. <clears throat> oh, sorry, excuse me. It is just being a bit. A bit naughty today but like I say I know there's a lot of people that have got far worse effects from from Covid so we can cope with my voice just going a bit funny can't we now I'm going to start with um, weathered wood because I just want that grey to start off with as I say DTP direct to paper a really really old technique lots of people use it so nobody can claim it as their own it's been around since wherever but it is a great one and I know a couple of ladies have messaged me and said they're really scared of doing it don't be scared honestly it's the easiest thing in the world but the best thing I can say to you is don't press too hard and for me the best tip is I angle the ink pad and you just angle it probably about 45 degrees and just gently swipe I mean get yourself an old piece of card if you're worried and have a practice but honestly you can't go wrong now, I'm just doing it direct to paper. There's lots of video tutorials around where if you use a scoreboard, it looks even more like wood. And I have to say, I did a, a workshop with my uh, workshop group where we did that technique, but then we added some brown brushes and it gave us knots. And again, that's lovely. But we're just using it to get some ink on the card. It's a really quick way to start a background. If you're not very good with brushes or blending or very good with them, um, Billy Brayer, this is a great way. So we've just added some weathered wood and weathered wood's great to start off with. And then I'm going to bring in a little bit of crushed olive because I want, so for my background look, I want the water to sort of, I know a lot of us put blue. Well, yeah, I dare say somewhere tropical, maybe you've got beautiful blue, but I just wanted to add, often I see the sea as sort of greenish shades and blue shades, especially where you've got tropical fish. So that's my theory. And also, I just wanted to make it look a bit more interesting. So I'm adding a bit of crushed olive, but to be honest, you can add any colour you want. And again, nice and light. I don't want a lot of this, just that hint, just that sort of sea green. And again, pressing lightly. And then after crushed olive, I'm going to come in with stormy sky. Now this one, I want a bit of ink around the edge. So what you can do, we can do the, again. But also what I want 
is I want some round the edge. And look, you can just go round and again, hold your ink pad about 45 degrees. If you put it flat, obviously it will cover. But if you just do it 45 degrees and almost swipe in, you'll catch the edges. Now, if you were doing the wood effect, driftwood, or if you did this in browns, you sort of mahogany wood, you could leave that. But for me, I'm just going to come in with my smoothie and blend it. But it's just a way for me... And I've got to be honest, it's a quicker way than me keep going back to my ink pad. And then I'm just going to go around and blend. And also I'm using my craft mat and there's a bit of ink on there. So I'll pick that up. And I just want to fuzzy that edge, you see. And then what I'm going to do is just come in on my... And just blend a bit across here. And it just gives that lovely sort of watery. And again, you've got these lines as though you've got drips coming down or you could have that on the bottom as though it's little bubbles going up. It's just that general nice background. Now, often I would flick water at this point, but I'm going to leave it because I want to concentrate on the stamping. And it's important for me, I do my stamping next and we'll flick some water after because I'm stamping with a permanent ink. So I've got plenty of time to be flicking my water. It's just if I flick it now, we'll have to dry it and then stamp. And I'd rather stamp before while well, my card's nice and flat. And what I want to do is just give myself a guide. Now, I didn't do this on my original. I just got my ink pad and gave myself a line. But I'm thinking maybe it'd be easier today if I actually put a line. Right, let's do it properly. Let's just make sure it's a straight line. Because that would be hilarious, wouldn't it, if I didn't get it straight. So just about in the middle-ish. will do it's just to give me a guide and then I can come in with my ink pad and this is just roughly where my mirror bit is going to be so I'm just going to give myself a, a line there so and again so that gives me an idea where my fish are going so now on to the stamping now let's have a look what fish first. These two fish we're using are from the fish set. And what we're going to do, I'm going to bring in my stamping mat. Let me just wipe that. Now on the ref for making a reflection, there's three ways, um, for me, the easiest three different ways of doing it. You can use your, your brayer, roll it. And again, I've done that in the past video. You can also use uh, your gel press. But for me, the easiest and quickest way is a piece of acetate. So what I tend to keep at hand are just, this is um, a thin piece of acetate that came. It was a piece of packing, actually. And I just cut it into various sizes. And this is what I'm going to use. It's just keep finding it because obviously it's see-through. You put this down, you don't know where it is. And what we're going to do first is we always stamp the reflection first. And what I'm going to do, so we're going to use our permanent ink, our Versafine Claire, and I'm going to ink up the fish. As I say, he's from the fish set. Now, this would work with, with any of them. You could use the, the larger ones, um, flow if you wanted. But I'm just going because of my size of card. And again, I've just caught some round the edge. And you know me, I'll end up smudging this if I don't clean it off. And what I'm going to do is on my piece of acetate, I'm going to very carefully stamp. Now that did move a little. It is, obviously your acetate's quite slippy, so it's not easy to, I've got to be honest, I, I nearly always slightly move mine, peel it off. But what you've got to remember is we're going to do a reflection, so a reflection would not be perfect. So I'm going to place this down. That's where I want my reflection. And again, try and place it down and then give it a rub. So this is like those um, transfers. You can get the transfers that you rub with a little uh, lollipop stick, don't you, like this? So maybe let's bring in a little wooden 
obviously you know me I stamp on these a lot so I always have lots of these around now if you want to see if you've transferred any you can always lift it up keep hold here there we go look we've got some and again don't be hard on yourself this is a reflection so it won't be perfect <clears throat> excuse me it won't be as deep as you your stamping but that's fine because it is a reflection you know honestly when you look at reflections they've got um obviously watermarks in them they've got ripples and they are that just a reflection lift that up and then to clean this i'm just going to use you can use a, a damp cloth and it just cleans off the acetate but i am going to dry it because i want to use the acetate again and obviously it's important it's dry now we'll stamp the fish on this side again it's easier well i find it easier to do the reflection first and then stamp our original fish sorry if my head comes in so i just want him about the same distance away don't i and the same you could have so much fun with this there we go so we'll stamp our next fish now if you did want to just have all your fish you know, if you didn't have this, just stamp them this way. I mean, you could go over if you wanted to make it deeper, add a bit of colour. But as I say, we're working on it being a reflection. So we'll, we'll add our other fish now. I think the hardest bit of this is actually stamping on the acetate, I've got to be honest. Sort of hold your breath when you do it, don't you? Or is that just me? I hope you have a go at this. It, it is just really good fun. Again, the acetate will stick, so we just want to gently peel it off. There we go. Well, that one's worked really well, look. So we'll just place him a little bit further behind. There we go. I'll give him a rub. I'll just use my finger for this one to show you that you can just use your finger. Again, let me have a lift up. Oh, yeah, we've got some. So lift that up. Yeah, it's looking lovely, isn't it? So clean that one again. And again, it's a nice one to do this. It's a, a bit slow, a bit repetitive, but you know what? As long as we enjoy what we're doing. And we'll stamp him now. Now, when I did this one, I purposely put that fin look just under there. So it would give me something to sort of eyeball. So the beginning of his fin, and that's about level. So I reckon about there. And again, it's easier if you've just got something you can just think about as to where... To put it there we go i will have a go with our little our little pound stamp our little <clears throat> solid one so let's see what this works like now again this is a silhouette so let's see how he works on the acetate i'm gonna hold it steady because i know this one could slip again because you've got a lot of ink on there so I'll just try and hold it steady. <clears throat> and again, don't, don't try and over press and lift it up. Oh, there we go. And a little bit of ink, because I didn't want to over press, but that's fine. Again, we're just looking at that reflection and we'll put him here, sort of in between the two. Let's give him a good little rub. lift it up yeah oh that's nice <clears throat> like i said the bit that's missing you can either color that in with pencils got to be honest i'd be tempted to leave it because i like almost the way it's that watery reflection 
And as I say, sometimes people try and be too perfect. And if you're too perfect, it doesn't look like a reflection because it's almost too perfect. So that wants to be about, about there. There we go. Now, what we'll do, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. We'll give that a bit of a blot because we don't want to smudge it. And what we'll do is we're going to add a bit of a bit of foliage. Now, on my original, I've got two or three here, but we'll, we'll just add a couple just to give you the idea, just to show you how to do it. And it's the same technique. Let's find, have we got a, got a bigger piece of acetate? And I'm going for, I think this is sea tangle. Do forgive me if it isn't. And the beauty of this, like I say, is you will get, you could just stamp this first and second generation, but if you look, it's definitely flowing one way. So it's nice to have the pure reflection. Such a delicate stamp, this. So again, onto the acetate. Try and hold it. Try and not let it smudge. Now, I might be wrong, but I've, I've not seen this done before. I've seen reflections where we have top and bottom. I've not seen any side-by-side -side reflections. So um, I was quite excited when I had the thought of the fish just, you know, swimming towards either the edge of the... I mean, they could be in an aquarium, couldn't they? A big fish tank at Sea Life or Sea World or somewhere like that. And then they're just seeing their own reflection. Right, let's see, peel that off and then I think we'll just put that at the back here. And again, give it a good press. Now again, you'll get used to your own way of doing this. I mean, I have a little, um, my little Billy Brayer and again, I could just bring him in. He's quite useful for doing this. Yeah. Again, just check you haven't got ink on him first. So we'll give this a wipe. As I say, the ink, the VersaFine, although it's a permanent ink, it does just wipe off your acetate. So as long as you do it straight away. And then let's stamp our original. I want to get the height the same, don't I? So just sort of by his tail, aren't we? There, do you reckon? Yep, we'll go for that. Like I say, it's nice because you know they are the opposite which is lovely, so it's your pure reflection. So what we'll do, we've got our stamping done. We'll add a little bit of stenciling. Give that another quick blot because I don't want to smudge it. It's just building up so nicely, isn't it? So we'll add a little bit of stenciling and I'm going to go for the coral. And I have to say, I find it so much easier since I've been putting my stencils in these lovely little plastic sort of wallets. We'll go, I think, for the... We'll use crushed olive and mowed lawn. So let's go crushed olive first. Let's do our reflection. What you've got to remember, what I'm thinking of is you see the stencils. Obviously, they almost have a reverse, don't they? Because they have a front and a back. So I'm going to use the back and that's going to be my lighter side. So if you want to make it easier, use the border here, look, where your middle is. So that then you can flip it and use that and that will help with your reflection. So you can use your stencils as a reflection too. So if we, to make it easier... To explain if we line the top up there and the side there now this is the lighter one isn't it i'm just going to hold it so i'm going to go crushed olive and i'm just going to come in it's just to add some added interest bit of coral in the background 
And again, if I want to have a look how I'm doing, there we go, that's nice. I don't want to add any more. Now, what I will do is just give that a quick wipe because obviously when I turn it over, the ink will come like we've done when we actually do take a, 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 a second print off it. But in this instance, I don't want the ink on the stencil and do make sure it's dry. There we go. So we had it that way before. So we'll turn it this way. And again, we're going to line that up with the top, that on my mirror. And I'll come in to start off with a bit of crushed olive. Just a little bit. And then I'm going to come in with mowed lawn just so it's a bit deeper because, again, this is my, my side. So I want it deeper than my reflection. And I want to carry that through the whole theme. So if I can do that with my stenciling as well. So let me hold that and lift it back. Maybe just a little bit stronger. Can take that a bit stronger, I think. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And as I say, we've actually got the reflection, and you can see here where you've got the reflection of the, the two sides. Now, when it comes to colouring, we'll just add a little bit of colour. And I'm going to use my Ink Tense pencils, which I'm just, Eric's just sat at the side in a conscious, I don't want to drop anything on him. So when it comes to the colour, what I decide is, is I would, so if I'm going blue for one of the fish, so I've just got two colours and I've gone for a dark blue and a light blue. So all I've done is on the actual side of my design. Now again, you will spend longer doing this. This is my intent pen, intent, intense pencils. Oh, I can't speak today. So they are water reactive. And then I'm going to use my lighter colour on this side. Again, it's my reflection, so I don't want it to be as vibrant. And then what I will do is come in with... Use my bigger paintbrush. Otherwise, we'll be here all day, won't we? There we go. Just add a bit of water there to activate that colour. And I always do the light one first, so that if I transfer any colour, and this is going to be deeper, more vibrant. Almost like I'm just going on the theory of that first and second generation. So that's the blue. And then I went for a red. So let me have a look. Have I got sort of a... a light red and a deep red and again I'm not going for any specific it's just um, a lighter and a deeper so let me get this right way around so again my deeper red on this side and you could spend time if you wanted just colouring each individual I mean the detail on these is, is beautiful but I'm just going to do a quick quick bit of a gel type colouring and then the lighter red on this side And again, just check my brushes clean and I'll come in with a lighter colour first. Again, it's just a, a quick way of, now you could add more and obviously you could spend ages a lot, make the colouring a lot nicer. Obviously, it's more the, the stamping technique I wanted to share with you today. So I'm just doing a quick type of bit of colouring here. But I just want this deeper, a deeper, more vibrant colour. It's important that my, my first one is deeper and, as I say, more vibrant. And I just need a couple of greens. Let me have a look, so I'm just going to go for... And again, just adding a little bit of colour onto the... The seagrass and again the same on this side just a hint if you can hear that sighing in the background that's Eric he's uh, just had him out this morning and he's just lying as I say to the side here but 
So if you hear any snoring, you'll probably be heading off to sleep soon and you might start snoring, so I promise that is not me. Right, so we've added a little... What I will do is let's just, I think... Let's just add a little bit of colour there and we can add some... You know how black sometimes gets a bit has a bit of shade of sort of blues and we'll just that'll make that I think that looks better for that reflection doesn't it then what I want to do is just make my sort of mirror stand out a little bit so let's add a little bit of charcoal just down the middle just so there's an obvious divide there and I'm going to smudge that that's all I want there and what I want to do is just a couple of things I want my edge to just look it just looks a bit sort of unfinished now so that's your basic design so we've looked at how we do our stamping and our reflection we've looked at reverse stenciling and we've looked at adding some color darker and lighter so there's a few little finishing tricks that i just like to share with you if that's okay and that's i'm going to come in with rustic wilderness now i do love this color it's a nice deep color and i'm just going to blend some color around the edge I could have gone for blue, but I just thought that's almost, I don't know, too obvious. I just thought we've got quite a lot of blue going on there. So I'd go for this green and on top of the blue, it does almost look like that sea sort of bluey green colour. I'm going to put the lid on my ink pad. It's really important to put your lids on. And I'm just going to come in with my fan brush. And I want to, this is where I'm coming in with my water in my water and I'm going all the way around the edges just to give that lovely edge that and that'll bring in that the faux bleaching and that lovely mottled edge to make it look like it's sort of under under the water I mean I could flick more water here but I don't want to lose my stenciling so I'm happy with having it just around the edge And while that's drying, I'm just going to add a bit of shade. So I'm going to come in with my clean colour. Oh, Mags, I did get your email, by the way, about the clean colour. And I promise I will reply. Um, it is on my mind to reply. Sorry, I haven't replied yet, but I will. So I'm just adding just underneath. And again, it's not a great deal. This is a lovely light grey. And it's not in your face, but it's enough to just give that bit of shade. Just helps the whole design. And as I say, I'm just going underneath. And then on the top of my fish, just going to come in with my silver. And this is one of the um, silver signal pens. And that I'm just going on the top. Again, I'm being mindful. Obviously, the sides are drying. So. We'll just put that on top of all the fish. Look, I love this. Now, I'm just going to get a piece of kitchen roll and I'm going to block this just to speed it up a bit but I have to say I do love can you see all this around the edges and it really adds to that sort of underwater look but I'll just with, with my heat tool and we'll just dry this I mean at home you could leave it to dry naturally now always remember when you dry from the front dry from the back so how have you been doing how, how are things going 
you've got a busy week planned. We in the UK, we had our bank holiday on Monday, so I'm not sure whether our friends in the US and um, Australia, I know we've got a few lovely friends in New Zealand, and got a new follower the other day from Spain, so hello. So lovely that we can talk to lovely people all over. But yes, yeah, so I, I don't know whether you had, we had a, a day off on Monday, so that was lovely. But it does mean that I find myself catching up because I've almost missed a day. So the rest of the week, I'm sort of feel I'm catching up. <laughs> right, what I'm just going to do is add some little, some little bubbles. Now, there is a little bubble stamp and I've got to be honest, I do have it, a Lavinia one. But I couldn't find it. You know, when these stamps do, they go hiding, don't they? So... All you need to do is get your white orbs stencil and we'll just draw some in. And I've just got a black fine liner pen and we'll go for this one. Here you can tell it's the one I use, it's got the... And we'll just add one there and then... And again, you will spend longer checking that they are actually opposite each other. I'm just sort of doing it roughly we'll just add those and then i just like to add some little dots just to give a, a bit of interest little black dots it just stops it looking like a circle it makes it look more like it's a, a bubble an air bubble and you can add some you could add your white posca if you wanted i'm just going for the silver to go with my silver and we'll just add a little bit of shade under them so that is looking so lovely isn't it and the last little thing i'm going to bring in is i've just got and this one is um it's a coarse it's a white coarse pearl medium and it's one of the pan pastels and i'm just going to bring it in and i'm just going to add down my mirror here And then what we'll do is I just want a little bit so it looks like the sort of sparkles in the in the sea. And again, this won't show up. I'll try and lift it up to show you, but believe you me, it does. I mean, you could add your glitter if you want. I just want that pastel sort of bit of, and I'm not putting it on the fish. I just want it around them and a little bit there. Now, again, I know people keep asking about the pan pastels and also about the, the, pe the pencils, the charcoal. I've got to be honest, for the amount I've put on here, I wouldn't seal this. I think this will be fine. Often what I would do is just take a little um, piece of cotton wool and just gently buff the whole thing. Um, if it's a larger area that you're using your pan pastel and your pencils, there are lots of good spray sealants around. Um, but certainly for this, I would give it sort of 20 minutes to dry and then just gently buff it with um, a light sort of piece of tissue. But if I bring, I've got a piece of black card there. And if I bring that in, I'm hoping if I bring it a bit closer, we might get <laughs> a little bit of that lovely sort of sea reflection in the water. Because I'm hoping you enjoyed that. It was just a little bit of fun to look at this way of doing the reflection under. I mean, you could have so much fun with this, couldn't you? So, I, I, I mean, and I can't wait. Um, if ever you, you make anything um, and you want to email it to me, that would be lovely. I can always put pictures on my blog and then we can, it's a way we can share with each other. Um, such a lovely thing to do. And just before I go, one lady asked about the last of my workshops that I've recorded. If you remember, I've got my pre-recorded workshops and we've got nine of them and I've got them all in here. The last one I did, number nine, this one, is the underwater design. And if you remember, the workshops, they're only £6 each. They're at least an hour long and we'll spend time creating this together. We've got lots of lovely techniques, look, using the stencils, all sorts of... You don't have to have the same stamps as me, the same products. Um, and you can watch it again and again and again as many times as you want. So again, anybody who wants to email me, that was number nine. And it's just with doing an underwater theme today. 
I mean, again, you could even tie in and pop one of your fish this way, couldn't you? So I just thought I'd, I'd answer that question before I go. And then I'll bring in the piece we've created today and our original. So I'm hoping you enjoyed that. It's lovely spending time with you, as always. Must admit, this one looks a little bit rich around the edge. It is funny, isn't it, when you do two things, especially, I mean, I've got to be honest, none of mine ever work out the same. I think I prefer the deeper stenciling in this one that we've created today. What do you think? Right, I'm off. I've actually got a hairdresser's appointment today, so it's all coming off. It's got far too long. It's so long since I've had it cut. So I'm off to have that experience today. It's a long time since I've been. <laughs> so wish me luck. <laughs> Short back and sides, I think. So you take care, everybody. Thank you, as always, for joining me. Um, Eric says bye as well. He's fast. As oh, no, he just lifted his head. <laughs> you take care, everybody. Thanks for all your support. Your friendship and support is amazing. And thanks to our new subscribers. It's lovely to have you on board and joining in our journey. So you take care, everybody. Love and hugs. Bye for now.